Hey everybody, welcome to the garden. I hope you're having a great day. Shout out to the lemon and lime lovers and everybody in between. Today, we're gonna to be doing a tutorial video on an indicator that is near and dear to my heart. It is called Ichimoku Kinko Hyo. It is an indicator that has helped uh, create discipline within my trading that's really helped me become the trader I am today. I attribute a lot of my success not just early in my trading career, but now, even today, almost 10, 11 years in trading uh, to this indicator, because without it, I don't think I would have developed the disciplinary skills to be consistently successful, okay? So I wanna share this indicator, even though I don't commonly use it as much today, because I believe it is so valuable for not only new traders, but even intermediate traders that tend to not be consistently profitable. This video is gonna be the start of a set of videos uh, in this video, I'm mainly going to focus on the components of Ichimoku as there are many lines in Ichimoku, so it can be very overwhelming to see, but I'm going to explain it in a way I hope where all the components make sense and I'm going to show you how they work together. And in that process, um, at least for me, it's made the picture very, very simple to see. Um, and then I'm also gonna share basic Ichimoku strategy. So pretty much how you trade Ichimoku uh, basic strategy. And this strategy has a lot of pros. It has some cons as well. But what I love about it is the simplicity of it and the repeatableness of it. And it is going to make you money. The only reason why it won't is there are very few markets it doesn't work. And then there are also many personalities it doesn't work with, and that's really the hardest part, okay? So we're uh, using the, the replay uh, uh, button on TradingView, so we're in the past. So right now we're about in 2018, the end of 2018, and I'm hiding the candles because I'm gonna put on the Ichimoku uh, indicator, and before I show the candles, I just wanna go over every component, and I'll do my best to try and be as clear and concise about it, and then I'll also try and explain clearly the, um, the prerequisites for entry is bullish and bearish with the basic strategy of Ichimoku, okay? So starting with Ichimoku, so we're gonna look for it here. So here it is. Um, you'll see that TradingView has their own, their own built-in one called Ichimoku Cloud. Um, there is an issue with this one. It's actually calculated incorrectly. Uh, they're about a period late. So depending if you're trading on the, you know, four hour, one day, weekly, month, or whatever, um, you're actually gonna be one period behind. And that is actually a pretty big deal. So if you're trading on the daily or higher, that means you're one day late to an entry, one day late to an exit, one one month late if you're trading on the monthly. So it, if you extrapolate that delay over years of trading where you're hitting 1,000, 2,000 trades, well, um, you might have missed out on a ton of opportunity. You may even have lost a lot of money. So it's very important that you keep in mind that the trading view built-in version is calculated incorrectly. The one I do recommend is made by uh, Kavank. Hopefully I'm saying that correctly. They calculated it correctly um, and you'll get the correct measurements for Ichimoku. So let, let me actually put them both on the put them both on so you can see. So this is the basic one that's on trading view, okay? And then here's the Kavank one. You'll see it in different colors because the Kavank one I've uh, I've, you know, customized the colors to what I like. Um, but if you notice, the Kavank one is the cloud with the black, like that gray, and then two black lines. And then the basic one has the green line and the red line with that kind of reddish hue, reddish and greenish hue. Um, you'll see it's actually about a day behind because of what I said, there's a miscalculation and um, they haven't fixed it. And I don't think they are going to fix it. It's been many years. So do yourself a favor. If you're gonna put this on your charts, make sure you use the Convonc one because it, it's the correct calculation, okay? So let me take the trading view one off and here's the Convonc one. And the Convonc one, I'm gonna change the colors to the default, all right? And then I'm gonna change the colors back uh, to the, the, the color scheme I like as I discuss each component, all right? So let's make it normal, there we go. All right, so this is how it normally looks, all right? And as you can see, there's a lot of crap happening on the chart, but I'm gonna hopefully make it a little bit clear and uh, it really is really a simple trading system once you understand each component. All right, so let's start off with the inputs. The inputs are the default inputs. I recommend keeping these exactly the same. I would not change them. If you go online, 
you will see there are many different schools of thought about this, especially when it comes to crypto. Um, this is a very old uh, indicator. I won't go into the details of its origins, but it's late 1800s, early 1900s is when it was developed. Um, and it was mainly developed in regards to the stock market and rice trade. The th however, um, these these values have a lot of importance in regards to time in the charts. Again, it's more advanced theory. We're not going to focus the, on that in this video, but I find that these are the correct uh, inputs to have. The crypto inputs, I believe, are two times or three times larger than this. And the thinking is because crypto is 24/7 and the stock market isn't, that you need to, you know, extend these out to uh, to contribute for that. And you know, maybe maybe that's that's correct i've back tested the crypto one in the past i found it to not be any better in some cases actually be worse than the default settings but if you make money with the crypto settings more power to you don't let me to, don't let me stop you okay because the, the goal is of course to you know make money in the end uh but for me personally i find that default settings are best okay they, gi they give you the best view of the flow uh, and that's very important in Ichimoku is to be able to see the flow of things. All right, and the style. So let's start with uh, the first two lines, which is the Tenkinsen and the Kaijusen. So I'm gonna turn off all the other lines very quickly. So the Tenkinsen is actually the faster line. It's the blue line here. The Kaijusen is the slower line. Tenkinsen and Kaijusen uh, operate similar to moving averages, but they do have a degree of uniqueness to them compared to moving averages. So yes, they measure time, just like a moving average. So the Tenkinsen is nine periods in the past. The Kaijinsen is 26 periods, um, but they also take into account volatility. Uh, so Ichimoku is in the end is actually a support and resistance indicator. Um, and all the lines measure support and resistances off of specific time periods. The Tenkinsen is the nine and the Kaijinsen is the 26. So if you go back, if I had the candles up, you would go back and see in 26 periods from today, which in this case is the 3rd of September, you would find a support and or resistance at that time period, okay? And if that is broken, you will then see this line point in the direction it's broken, all right? So if it was a resistance, you would start seeing the Kaijinsen point upward, kind of like it is here. And based off of the volatility of that breakage, the the, the, the velocity of that break of that support resistance is how how vertical it would get. All right, so that's where it gets, it differentiates itself from the moving averages. It's very unique. And in my opinion, far more uh, informative, okay? And I'm gonna change it to the colors I like. So Tenkinson, like I said, is the nine period. I like keeping it blue and just make it, you know, the, you know, the thinnest and the bluest. And then Kaigerson, I like making uh, into black line and I keep it at the second thickness personally because it is an important line. So I do want to stand out a little bit more. And then the next line is called the Chico span. And the Chico span actually has a lot of debate around it. So if you go online, there are so many Ichimoku traders who will say this is the most important line. And there are so many Ichimoku traders who will say this is the least important line and they don't even have it on the chart. There's a lot of schools of thought on this uh, on this line. Me personally, I think it's I think it's very important. I, I can arguably say it's the most important or at least the second most important line. Um, so the function of this line is, I would say, threefold. Uh, the first function is to identify when you are in a range, okay? So Ichimoku is a trend trading system. So the bane of your existence as a trend trader is ranges. You wanna avoid ranges uh, and consolidations as much as possible. And the Chico span uh, is attempting to do that for you. So whenever you see the Chico span trading within the candles, it's telling you, hey, this is a range, you should stay away. So let's turn on the candles real quickly. So whenever you see something like this, like where you have the Chico span inside the candles, you wanna avoid taking any trades, okay? You're not looking only at the Chico span to determine that, but it's a, a very big indication that, hey, you're likely going into some sort of range or you've been in a range and you want to stay away. The next thing, it also indicates whether you're in a, a uptrend or downtrend. So if the lagging span or Chico span, so the Chico span is a Japanese word for lagging span. Uh, if you see this uh, above the candles, then it's likely you're in a, a 
bullish trend, right? You're in an uptrend to the bullish side and vice versa. So if you see it below the candles, you're probably in some sort of downtrend, all right? But what you've noticed is the lagging span or Chico span is in the past. It's kind of offset from current price, right? So let's change the color of this so it's a little bit clearer. So I'm gonna change it to the color I like. I like making it green. I like making it very thick. So I'll make it 100% and then thick. All right, so this is actually 26 periods in the past to present price action, right? So let's pull this pull from here. And as you can see, 26 days in the past, but it is measuring current price action, all right? So it's showing, it's showing you an offset of 26 days. And in, you know, in Ichimoku, that's, what, uh, that's the current mathematics and that's pretty much how it works okay so you're you're getting whenever it falls into some sort of range it's falling into price action from 26 days in the past all right so that's why when lagging span does break out whether it's to the upside or downside from a ranging market it's a pretty big deal okay and that's why i i personally like oops i personally like the lagging span i think it works pretty well but again there there are there are times where it might it might give you a false signal, but there are other components of Ichimoku that help filter that out as well. The last thing it does, it actually does give you somewhat of a view of the strength of a trend, okay? The strength of a trend. So the farther it is, so here we go. This is back in 2017, everyone remembers this. The farther it is away from the candles when, you know, it in a trend indicates the strength of the trend, okay? So that when you see something like this, you know, wow, it's in a really big trend, either to the upside or downside, in this case, the upside. And again, we'll go over that uh, later in the video as we start looking at uh, uh, forward examples. All right, and the next thing is, some would say the most important part is the cloud, the cloud itself. So the single span A and the single span B. And the single span A is measuring 26 periods into the future and the single span B is measuring 52 periods into the future. Okay, so I'll show you exactly what I mean by that. And here's the plots. So uh, unlike the, uh, the Chico span that's in the back 26 periods, um, you have the cloud is actually in the future 26 periods like this. Okay, so Ichimoku is attempting to show you the future. All right, so this forward cloud is actually uh, current price action and this forward cloud is trying to indicate that you're going into an uptrend a downtrend or also confirming if you're in a range all right so we'll go over that as well and I'm gonna change the colors to the cloud that I like so Seiko span a is the faster line of the cloud uh, I like making this a black line as well keeping it thin okay and then Seiko span B I like making a black line as well but I like making this one very thick as well um, this is also a very important line, maybe the most important. Uh, reason why I like making it thick and you know very clear on the charts, the single span B is always the median of the current market. So uh, if you use Fibonacci retracement, single span B always measures from the current pivot, uh, high or low, to the next one um, as the 0.5 or 50% retracement. Uh, so that's why I find it to be a very important level. So if price breaks this or loses it, um, you know, th then you, you, it indicates and implies that, you know, you have a change in the market occurring. Uh, and then I like making the colors. I like making the uh, bullish color yellow. And then I like making the bearish color black and make that about 30%. So this helps. This is what helps me like uh, visually be able to see what's happening clearly. And this is how my Ichimoku uh, normally looks and if you follow my discord, you know, I mostly use price action and uh, support and resistance uh, But you know from time to time I'll look at Ichimoku, but nowhere near as as, as much as I used to I used to exclusively trade Ichimoku in the past um, And there were a lot of times where I rebelled against it like my first two years of trading I first started with Ichimoku then I fell into another indicator and then another indicator and then I would come back to Ichimoku and what I noticed over here is, is that every time I went back to Ichimoku and I just followed the basic strategy and not getting enticed by all this other stuff I made money uh, the other stuff I would make money sometimes and then I would most of the time lose money 
And then there came a point in time after three years where I exclusively trade Ichimoku and that's what started me on the path of being consistently profitable. And then it helped me learn about candlestick trading far more and understand basic support and resistance to the point where I am now. Uh, and I don't really trade with Ichimoku as much, if at all. But again, I would not be where I am without it. Okay, so for Ichimoku, the basic strategy of Ichimoku is this here. So I actually have it written down. Let's uh, go on to a weekly real quickly so I can just get to it here. Here we are. All right. So the basic strategy of Ichimoku for both the longs and shorts entries are bullish entries. The candles must be above the Tenkinsen, which is the blue line, the Kaijinsen, which is uh, the black line, and the cloud, which is clearly the cloud. The lagging span, which is that thick green line, must be above the candles as well. You also want to see the Tenkinsen above the Kaijinsen. So this right here is actually what you want to see. So you have a Tenkinsen crossing above the Kaijinsen, which is known in Ichimoku as the bullish TK cross. So it's similar to like a moving average golden cross or something like that. You want to see that as one of the things to check off your checklist to look for a possible entry. Okay. And the bearish entry is essentially the same thing, just reverse. So entry, you want the candles to be below the Tenkin, below the Kaijin, and below the cloud. You want the lagging span to be below the candles, and you want the Tenkin to be below the Kaijin. So essentially the same thing. And here are the periods of each of the lines. That way, if you want to just you know, see it visually, it's right there. All right. And now let's see if we can get an example of an entry or exit. So right now we are in, clearly, we are in a range, all right? And there's a few reasons for that. One is you're getting the Kaijinsen that's trading within the candles, essentially. There's really no clear break to the up or down side. Even now, uh, you're still within the cloud. So whenever you're trading inside of a cloud like this, like this, it's considered a chop zone. You don't want to trade uh, inside of a cloud. It's to be avoided in Ichimoku. And let's say, as we can see, price may be breaking out. The reason why you won't take this long is because the forward cloud, which is the current cloud, so this is where, this is where Ichimoku can get confusing, especially if you're back testing it. The current cloud is not the cloud you're directly above or below. It's the one that's 26 periods in front of you is not bullish, right? It's bearish. It's a bearish cloud. You don't want to hop in long when this cloud is still bearish because what this indicates it's not that you're going to go down it's that you're likely still in a range so yes the lagging span is breaking through the candles here you do have that bullish tk cross and you do potentially have a candle breaking out of the cloud but the cloud that's current uh is not bullish and you don't you you really don't want to go against uh uh, what the cloud is saying. You don't want to go against what the, 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 the lagging span or the Tenkin and Kaijin are saying. You want to wait for all of the boxes to be checked. If you do that, you will likely make money in your trades. It's hard though. It's hard because you have to be patient. So now we're seeing we have a closure above the cloud. We have the lagging span above the cloud and above the candles. And we do have that bullish take, TK cross, but we don't have a bullish cloud. But we are seeing it possibly thinning out to possibly begin a change to a bullish cloud but we can't make that decision yet so we're still going to wait and look this is why you don't do it this is why you do wait because you would have got caught here and you would have you would have lost your trade most likely all right so you're still in that range it's so important that you are able to identify when you're in a range and ichimoku helps you do that that's one of the best uh aspects of this trading package in general so let's see what happens next. Still can't make a decision because even though you're breaking down, the lagging span still within the candles, you're still above the candles technically, and the, the Tenkin is still above the Kaijin, so it's not a bearish entry. Still in that range, still in that range. And if you notice, pretty much all the lines are sideways, right? So you have the Tenkin and Kaijin are kind of within each other sideways. And then you have the single span B, the thick black line sideways. Single span A is mostly sideways. Remember what I said that 
these are just measuring time periods. So single span B is 52 periods forward and backwards. A is 26 forwards and backwards. Kaijusen is 26 backwards. And Tenkinson, the blue line, is nine backwards. Whenever you see these lines go in the direction, that means those levels, nine periods back, 26 periods back, and 52 periods back, were taken out. And that's when you start seeing a change in direction. Okay, so whenever you see something like this where the, a line will just come straight into the candle like this, it doesn't mean that resistance or support was taken out. What it means is after a certain amount of time, it does the calculation going nine periods back again, and it brings you to the average price at that time, which around that time was about 6,400 bucks. So now you have a new uh, median price level where fair value is. This is where it's really cool and almost operates very similar to a VWAP, which is a volume weighted average price. So the Tenkinson is showing you in the short term, the nine periods, uh, you know, mark, uh, measured in nine periods, the average price is $6,400. See, this is where it gets really cool with Ichimoku. And that's a little bit more advanced. You don't really need to know all that, but it's good to know. Now we're just waiting for an entry. So we do have the Tenkin up below the Kaijunsen. We have we have the Kaijunsen above the Tenkin, so that's bearish. We do have the lagging span possibly coming out of the candles, but we are waiting for an entry. It's not there yet. Look at that, still in the range. And as as we are still looking somewhat bearish, the cloud though is starting to turn bullish. So again, another indication that we might be going into a more of a range. Oh, wait, are we? Yep. Yep, maybe. <laughs> this is where you got to be patient. You can't do anything. So you're waiting all these days not to do anything. Oh, but here we are. Okay, so let's go back one candle here. Hold on. So finally, we have a possible breakdown. Right here. Okay, so this is your entry. This is your entry. Why is this your entry? Well, it crossed all the, the it checked all the boxes you need. It's hard to see. So let's get rid of this candle here. You have a bearish TK cross. You have the lagging span that's finally breaking under the candles. And then you have a bearish cloud now pointing downward. So remember this, you don't always have to wait for the cloud to point downward. But when you do see something like this, when it's breaking a range, it's a very good sign because that means 52 periods ago, whatever res support that was there just got lost. Okay, just got lost, got broken through, and 26 periods ago, just got lost of support. So now you would take this as a short entry, and this is where you have another decision to make, okay? So you can decide where you wanna put your stop loss. I'm gonna share what I used to do when I was younger, and I'll share what I would do if, you know, trading today, all right? So when I was younger, obviously I was trading with less money, so I would, what I was focused on was trying to get the most out of my trades. So, and also try to you know, risk the least. And sometimes it bit me in the butt, but the times it didn't was, honestly, it was account changing trades and some, and you know, a case or two life changing even. All right, so I would put my stop loss where the tank, uh, the Kaijun Sen is, all right? And I had said to myself, let me trail the Kaijun Sen all the way to break even. And once I get to break even, I don't, I don't move my stop loss again. I won't bring it into profit. I won't do anything like that. All I would focus on is if the Kaijunsen kept coming towards my entry price as price broke towards the direction I wanted, I would just follow it until I'm in break even and then I would never touch my stop loss again. And I would never touch my trade again until a certain thing happened, all right? And again, it as I've mentioned, it, it worked out well. A lot of cases, it worked out badly in a lot of cases. There's pros and cons. All right, so here is, I'm gonna show you exactly what I would I used to do. So I entered here and then now we're watching as everything's going sideways. So what this tells us is fair value price is somewhere up here. So it's possible that price will come up here and tap these levels and that happens often guys. It'll come up here, tap these levels and if your stop loss is where mine is, you might get tapped out and then it goes in the direction you want. But you have to be willing, you have to, be, you have to let that happen. You have to let that happen. Okay, and look, that's exactly what happens. And the reason why I want to show you this, 
there are people who will say, okay, well, instead of doing the Kaijin Sing, you do the swing high. Well, look at that. Your swing, you just lost nearly 9%. You would have done the swing high here, or let's say not here, you would have done it up here, this swing high. Well, you will have lost that too. That's almost 10%. I only risked about 4%, maybe just over almost 5%. Okay? And that's okay. And that's okay. It's okay to take this sort of loss because guess what? You're going to get another uh, opportunity to enter. It's not that big a deal. I'd rather lose the 4 or 5% than the 8 to 10%. All right? So now let's go forward. I wanted to show that trade because that definitely was an entry. It just didn't work out. And that's going to happen. With this system, the win rate for most markets is anywhere from 44 to 51% in a good year. The thing is, your winners are massive. They don't, you don't, your winners are absolutely massive. All right. So you still aren't going to take this trade. Okay. Even now, this is not an entry. This is not an entry. Reason being is because you're still within a range. Okay. And this is where you do want to be able to understand price action. You're seeing that the lagging span is still within this candle bar. It, it, if you took this trade and it goes sideways, lagging span is going to go well all within. You're still within a range. Okay. You'll understand when you're out of a range when you start seeing the Kaijun Sin pointing down and the Tenkinson pointing down. That's when you really want to enter, is when you see these two lines breaking down. See what I mean? You got it. You got to be patient. And now the cloud is bullish again. Very flat. It's very flat. Everything is very flat. And this is keeping you out of this market. And that's to me is the coolest part about Ichimoku. This is keeping you out of all this nonsense. You only got into one bad trade that looked good. You got into one bad trade. Whereas if you're trading other stuff, you've probably been going in and out like four or five times already. Okay. So let's go back once here. So you can't get into this candle here. You can't get into this candle. You have to trade each mocha with no fear, guys. All right. So obviously you have to tank in above the Kaijun. So there's no entry here. You do have the lacking span technically below the candles. All right. And you do have a bearish cloud, though, again, very tight. It's very, very little volatility. But then we have this big sell off. And you're going to take this trade. All right. Your heart, your head might be saying, why would I take a 10% trade uh, that the candle that's fallen 10%? Or over 10%, really, because Ichimoku told you to. That's why. You're just going to follow what Ichimoku says, period. All right. You're not going to risk your entire life, but you're going to follow Ichimoku and you're going to follow the Kaiken Sim, which in this case is about six, six and a half percent risk. All right. And you have clearly the entire range was broken. And now I'm going to explain to you how I used to exit my trades, uh, you know, when I was younger. Okay. So you'll trail your you'll trail the cognizant right here. And there you have another break. And this is where this is the best part of Ichimoku. Ichimoku will never get you. It will never get you at the beginning of a trend, whether it's up or down. But when you get into a real trend, you're gonna get the entirety of the meat on that bone completely. And that's what I'm saying. You will get life-changing trades with Ichimoku. And it's far less choppy than moving averages okay moving averages can do the same thing but moving averages especially emas uh are moving faster than ichimoku so you're getting into things earlier but you're often getting faked out way way more okay way way more you put on emas in this whole this whole section of trading i'll tell you this right now you would have had about four or five entries and they all would have lost whereas ichimoku you had one and you lost and if you do what i do with the kaigensen you would have you would have uh, lost only 4% or about 5%. All right, so let's keep it going. So as you can see, pretty big move, right? So at the very low, we were talking about uh, almost uh, what, 30% almost. So at the very low, about 28%. We'll see if it's going to go lower. It went a little lower, so let's keep it going. So you're wondering, where do you take profit? Well, there are different schools of thought, right? So as I am now, I would have had, you know, a support level from a pivot zone where I would have taken profit. Um, some people I've read, you know, they'll wait until the Tenkinson is taken by the candle to take profit. Some people are the Kaikinson. There are some people who won't take profit until the cloud is taken out. Okay. There's different schools of thought with different levels of patience. Me, it's the lagging span. 
So I, back in the day, I would take a trade and I would not close it out until the candles start touching the lagging span. Or rather, the lagging span started touching the candles. So what that means is pretty much I stay in this trade until price goes into a range of some sort. Watch. So as you can see, the slowly but surely the lagging span is getting closer because the velocity of the drop is slowing down. But this is where it's incredible. Okay, so you have a choice here. Again, I didn't do this. If you are one of the people who wants to trail your stop loss, not just a break even like me, but you want to trail into profit with the lagging span, uh, the sorry, the uh, Kaijinson, you could, but you get stopped out right here, which is fine, right? There's nothing wrong with that. That's a 32% uh, trade, essentially, okay? That's not what I did when I was younger. That might be the correct thing to do. Sometimes it's better to do that. Sometimes it's not. Okay, so now, oh, I just skipped past where I would have taken out. So now we're seeing the, the lagging span is right at the can, just before the candles, uh, it's touching the body of the candle. I always wait for it to touch the body of the candle. Boom. This is where I would have closed. So if you were trailing the stop loss, you would have done better than me, okay? You would have done better than me in this trade. But that's okay. So this is where I would have closed, right here. Once once this daily candle closes, touching the the, the body of the of, of the lagging span is touching the body of a candle. So I would have banked in about twenty seven percent. Okay. So that's how I traded Ichimoku when I was younger. I would trail my stop with the kaijun until break even, and then I would not close the trade until the lagging span was touching the candles and it closed the candle closed and this is important and this is why i say i only trade on the daily and higher with ichimoku with the basic strategy is you only have to check the charts about one to two times a day you can check it on the close of the of, of the close and open of the candles which is 8 p.m depending on where you live uh and and then also you can check uh one time a day uh during the median time of the market which could be anywhere from like 12 to 4 p.m depending on where you live so you really only have to check two times a day and that means you you open up the rest of your life for other stuff okay and that's and that's very important you could sleep soundly essentially you don't have to be up at you know 1 a.m 2 a.m you just trade uh looking at the candles uh, one or two times a day and that that's how i would trade uh, Ichimoku when I was younger and there were some trades where you know I lost you know some trades where I lost and there were some trades where I've made thousands and thousands of percent off a single trade and it's it again it's one of those things where you have to be patient and you have to be willing to watch your gains um, evaporate uh, over time so now after this big drop you're not in anything right you're just waiting to see what happens next there's no entry here still in a range Remember the cloud is still positive. You have lagging span a little bit under, uh, you know, under the candles a little bit. You do have a bearish TK cross here, so possibly getting another entry. We'll see. It's not confirmed yet. Still twisty over here. You want to wait until it's very clear that you're having, you know, you have a bull, a bullish or bearish cloud. In this case, it's still too twisty. Trust your eyes. See, so you look out. You see when it's like on top of each other like that, you know it's not really a safe entry. Oh, here we go. So you could have taken this candle or this candle. This may not work out, but let's do it anyway. Remember, we made about 27% that last trade. So we'll go here. We'll move the candle, move the uh, stop loss here. It's about 9%, maybe a little over. Okay, so now we're going to move the stop loss again. So now we're risking so little. So we're risking around 4.5%. And remember, just your last trade, you made almost 28%. So you lost, but hey, you only lost 4%, 5% of what you made previously. And I want to show you these losses because I want you to see that you're going to get entries that will look good, but they may not work out. But if you trade how I used to trade, the risk isn't too bad. The risk isn't too bad. And the winners, as you're going to see, get, get insane. And again, this is good for crypto, stocks, whatever. So here's a basic strategy uh, entry for for a long side, okay? So you have the lagging span broke out of the candles some time ago. You had that bullish TK cross. And then finally, we were waiting for, and you had the candles above the cloud. And finally, we were waiting for a bullish 
a bullish flip on the cloud and that's what we got so we're going to enter here and let's see how this looks so let's pull this down so you're risking about 9.6 percent almost 10 percent and you lose <laughs> and you lose and that's that's going to happen that's going to and this is i wanted to show this as well because that's what's going to happen when you put your stop loss by the kaijinson some people will go for their swing low but again the risk is much higher but you may still be in the trade that ends up being a winner let's see So, so far, if you did the swing low, you're still in the trade and you're near break, you're near, close to break even, not really, but you're like at a minor loss. Now you're back into pretty much break even zone, okay? So, you yes, you would have been able to not get stopped out and lose some money, but I want to show you this. So, let's go back real quick. So, in my entry, right, which is, again, correct with basic strategy. You would have, I think, lost about 9, maybe almost 10%, right? So you lost some gains, which is fine. So yeah, so about 9.6%, give or take. So now, what do we do? Well, we don't just run away from the, the market. We know we're, we're, we're starting to show bullish signs. Even though we got stopped out here, now we just wait for another entry. So now we see that the, the Tenkinson is below the Kaijinson. So we're going to wait and see if we can get that bullish CK cross. And if the lagging span is going to start touching the candles, we're going to wait for that to break out too. So we have a couple of things we're waiting for here. Still hasn't happened yet. Okay, so now you have the Kaijinson pointing down, Tenkinson's above, but it's not showing any signs of trending yet. It's not there yet. There we go. This is what you want to see. You do you want to see the Tenkin and Kaijinson starting pointing up, and then you want the lagging span above the candles, and you want that bullish cloud. Okay, so trust your eyes. You always want to see these these lines veering to the upside because remember they're just support and resistance. They're measuring it. That means this candle broke through nine periods ago of resistance and 26 periods ago of support of, of resistance as well so that's a big deal okay and like i've displayed over and over it doesn't always work out that's okay but it it, it, it definitely has potential to get you into into quick early breakouts so here we go you're risking a lot less because the volatility of the market has been a lot lower so when you see this happen where you know your average would have been 10 percent risk you might say, well, I'm okay risking 10% still, so I'll lower it above, below the cloud or below the last swing low. Or if you're okay, hey, I'll, I'll take a 5% risk, that's fine. Remember, keep in account the structure of the market. If things are too tight, uh, then you might you might wanna uh, change where you're gonna put the stop loss. But let's keep it at the Kaijin Sen like always, like how I have always done it. So now, well, I went too fast, whoops, sorry. <laughs> uh, so now you see, Again, I would say we won two, lost two, right? Hopefully I got that correct. Or we maybe lost three, won two. But our one, our, our, our two wins or one win, I, I, I wasn't keeping track. Our one win was massive. And our two losses were somewhat, you know, small. You know, anywhere from 10 to, to 4 or 5%, right? So we lost, I would say, some of our gains, but not, not a whole chunk of it. And now you're slowly moving this into break even almost. So we're at 3.5%. And then you have this big candle, so boom! Clearly, you know you can move your you can move your entry, you know stop loss to entry, break uh, totally break even. You're in a good spot, and this happens all the time with Ichimoku. It's not just with Bitcoin; like this happens all the time. So now we're just going to do exactly what I've always done when I was younger: is just wait for the lagging span to to touch the candles. So we're going to wait for that to happen. The body of the candles, by the way, not the wicks, the body of the candles. It's very important it's the body of the candles because you'll get wicks like this. You want the bodies to start being touched, and that hasn't happened yet. And right now we're being rewarded for our patience. And guys, this, this has happened to me a lot. There we go. Okay. So about, I would say about candle, this candle here. Actually, no. No, it would be, it would be this candle. It would be the 
candle. I just went back from there we go. So here we go. So, you know, you got the lag span in the candles by the bodies, actually a little bit under. So you would close out here. Let's see how much we just made. 86%. This used to happen, not just with Bitcoin, but stocks too, all the time, all the time. It's just about patience. Because take a look at how long this trade took though. Okay. So you have to keep in mind, this trade did take some time. If you don't have the time or you don't have the patience for it, well, you're, you know, I, I can't do much for you in regards to the basic strategy, but you're going to get this happening. So this was about two and a half months, I'd say, 72 days. You made 86%. Depending on your leverage, it's a lot more than 86%. But keep in mind, you know, you're, you were risking about 5%. So if you did 10x, it's 860%. Right. If you did even more, which I don't think you, you could because it's five, you would have probably got liquidated if it went down to your entry, you would have been a lot more. Okay, so you just have to keep in mind if this is a great strategy uh, for you know longer term swings, could last a week, could last a couple months, um, but when they, when they make big moves, damn, the moves are huge. Damn, the actual moves are massive. Okay, okay, and then you would, you would, now we have an opportunity for the next another entry here so as you can see we don't have the full uh checklist being checked yet we have the lagging span still above the candles we have that bullish cloud we're just waiting for a bullish tk cross so we're waiting for that tank and send across above and there you go so you could take this one all right this candle you might be nervous but again you're not really thinking about the candles in this situation if you're, you know, if you're just trading the strategy, you're just going to be taking this long because you have a bullish TK cross. And look at the risk here. So you're pulling it up to the Kaijin saying you're risking about seven, seven and a half percent, maybe a little more, a little less. And you just made 86 percent. And then, you know, so, you know, it's it's definitely worth the, the risk. So now we'll see getting that continuation higher and boom. So, again, you can move your stop loss. You're trailing it through the Kaijin saying you eventually get the break even. And again, if you want to trail your your profit, uh, your stop loss and the profit with the Kaijinsen, there's nothing stopping you. It's just not what I did. If you did, you would have got stopped out right here, which would have been about another 17, 16% around there. But for me, I'm waiting for the lagging spin to, to touch the candle bodies. Still waiting. And look, we're and again, you have to be willing to watch the gains kind of evaporate. Boom. Okay. And there it's touching the count. And again, you would have it would have been better to trail in this case rather than than not. All right? And look, I only banked in about 5 almost 5% just under. All right? And that happens. It is what it is. But if I don't do it this way, the way I was doing before, I wouldn't have banked in that much. I would have got stopped out probably around here, maybe here. So there was you know, there's things where it's going to be pros and cons. All right? And now, let's get on to the next one. So let's go quicker here. So here is the potential, potential entry for a bearish, a bearish entry here. Let's just go through here. I know this is a long video, but I want to make sure you understand the basic strategy. All right. So it's not an entry because the cloud is not. We're not seeing any bearish cloud here. We're just seeing uh, it kind of squeeze on itself. So now you could you could consider this an entry. If you want to enter this, it's definitely it's definitely a possible entry. And you know we're gonna we're gonna enter it. So let's say let's say we entered here. So maybe you could just say right 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 here, okay. And then you would move stop loss up here and take a look at this. Look at the risk of this one, 18%. And that's because of all the volatility that we saw here. So if you're gonna do this trade, you're probably gonna want to do a smaller size or a smaller leverage. So keep that in mind because we don't know if it's going to come all the way back up. And look, it is. It is. It did. All right. So this is very important. You want to make sure if you're going to take trades every single time, even though, in my opinion, it wasn't really a clear trade because there wasn't enough separation, that you take into account the volatility and the risk change. All right. You can't do like the same size, like a thousand dollar trade here and then a thousand dollar trade here. Yeah, you wouldn't have lost as much as you made here. But eventually, those losses would catch up to you. All right. So now let's see. Now it looks like we're in somewhat of a range here. And this is where this is one of the greatest moments in Ichimoku to me. 
as we're coming up here watch so it's September 19th right now okay well actually it's not yet but soon if you've been in crypto for a while you know what's coming in a couple months <laughs> so here's an entry all right so here's a short entry so again you could tell the difference you can see when the entries happen like you could tell how they actually look you had that bullish dk cross but everything was still flat and then it broke supports and now all the lines are pointing down but most importantly the tankin and kaijin are pointing down you can't see it clearly because of the candle but you know that they're they're below you know tankin's below kaijin you see it's very steep so you'll take this short and let's see where we're going to put the stop loss right over here and this one's about 11 and percent so not too far away from like the 10 percent average we've been seeing and then we're gonna trail remember always trail it always trail it because every percentage saved means money saved every single time even if you're only moving at 0.5 percent like it moved that little it's important it's very very important because it's not always about winning the trade it's about losing the least you can in that trade see this is and this is one of my favorite parts of ichimoku you start at a almost 12 percent risk now you're down to 4.8 it's mad like that's it, it it's such a it's such a beautiful thing to see and look at that so when you see something like this this is what i used to do was i used to bring my stop my stop loss to break even and i would allow I would allow for the trade to keep going even if the lagging span was touching the candles okay because what this is showing us when that happens so when you get the Kaijin Sen just kind of like veer to the downside even though price didn't break any levels so take a look at this see how it just it actually price went up and it came down it's telling us that the the calculation for the last 26 periods has changed that the average price is now down here and because it's under your your entry you might as well just bring your your stop loss to break even because it's possible you're going into a longer term range and you'll get stopped out get stopped out break even that's totally fine it happens um, but in case in case it doesn't and it does break the direction you want well you're still in your trade and that's exactly what happens boom okay and then it doesn't <laughs> <laughs> and see, that's exactly why you want to wait for, you just want to bring your stop loss to break even in that sort of environment. All right. So that, yeah, that's simple. Again, you could just, you could just, you don't even have to think that way. You just say, well, Kaijun went under my entry. I'm bringing my stop loss to break even. That's totally fine too. And you would have avoided this, uh, this reversal, you know, this head, this head fake. All right. And now let's keep going. See what's next. I'll get rid of that. So trade that, again, we didn't really make any money in that trade if you trade the way I used to. If you had like uh, certain levels you want to take profit at, you would have been fine. Okay. Now we're going to skip ahead, okay? Because so I do want to bring this this to a close. But I want to show you a very important time in crypto history. And that was really the, the world history. And that's when, uh, pretty much when COVID hit in March. Okay, so I want to show you what Ichimoku was showing you when that happened. So now we're in February, just before, you know, the March madness. All right, so it's March 7th or 9th. Okay, so you had a short entry right here. You had a short entry right here here so let's do it one more time just so it's very clear you checked all your boxes you already had a bullish bull, uh, bearish flip on the cloud you had the lagging span breaking under the candles but you are trading within the cloud so it's still a chop zone you don't take that trade the tankinson is below the kaijinson but the candles are below, below above the tankinson so you have to wait and finally you get it right you have you have the, the kaijinson pointing down you have the tankinson pointing down you're going to take this short Okay, and you're gonna move your stop loss towards the Kaijin Sun, like usual. So it's about 15% um, risk. And then who could have saw it coming? COVID happened. So with with Ichimoku, 
you caught essentially the beginning of of this move okay now if you traded how i used to trade with the lagging span this move actually would not have been that big of a move for you because what happens after this initial fall and then this fall and buy back up the price comes right back up towards here and the lagging spend does not touch the candles until it gets all the way up here so you actually miss out on a ton of gains if you trade the way i did okay so take a look look at that look at that 51 percent at the at the the lowest from when we got in and here you have the candle being touched this is where you would have exited or i would have exited and it would have only been a 10 percent gain okay not bad but nothing but not 50 plus percent so you keep in mind that my way of trading may not be the most optimal uh and it may not you know jive with your personality all right you may want nowadays i would have had you know, levels to take profit all right but back then i didn't have much money so i was looking to you know get the big big moves with the least amount of risk and it worked out but you do want to keep that in mind there are different ways to do this and then ichimoku gave you the entry for pretty much the entire covid recovery by the way so you got you got in uh for almost the entire covid recovery so you would have, I think the, it would have been down here. You would have brought your stop loss to break even. And uh, yeah, you just you just would have stayed in it, essentially. Actually, we got out here because I would have exited when it touched here. I think there's like another entry where you get in and it just, it keeps you in for a while. We'll see. So possibly another entry. Oop, never went too fast. So here is that that other entry I was telling you about. Essentially, this wasn't a short entry over here because it was still technically within the candles. Finally, you're gonna have a breakthrough. Bullish cross. Everything's pointing up. You take. You take this long. You go to Kaijinson right here, which is about four about four percent risk, which is great. And then you just stick in it until the Kaijinson, until the lagging span touches the candles, which I think happens right here. Yeah, happens right here. But the move is actually pretty big. So I think it's like uh, right around here. So it's about 15%. And you actually do this like three times in this, in this time period. So this wasn't a bearish uh, entry because uh, by the time this flipped uh, bearish, the price was above Tenkinson already. And there's your other bullish entry right here, because you have everything above the clouds. And essentially, yeah, you just go along. There's what right? Uh, let's say right here. Why not? And then you just stay in until the lagging span touches the candles. And that's all like that's all how I, how I trade and this one is obviously a, a very big trade <laughs> and this happens it does happen uh, nope that didn't touch the body yet but it will there you go so you would have closed out right there and this trade would have netted you 187 percent so you know it, it it's not the it's not a perfect strategy there are no perfect strategies but it can definitely keep you out of really bad uh, range markets and keeps you ready for these sort of moves. Um, again, you can. There's different ways of taking profit. This is just how I used to do it. And uh, sometimes, well, you know, you'll get these massive, massive trades, but you have to be patient because these trades take a long time, not just to form, but they take a long time to play out. You'll get into it, and this took. Uh, take a look at how long this took. You know. This trade you got in right here, which is about October 12th, 2020. You're getting out right around here. So that's 111 days. <laughs> that's over three months. All right. But but again, it's it's one of those things where 
you can get addicted to Ichimoku if you have uh, you don't have to trade one at a time. You know, you can trade Bitcoin here and then you may get into a different trade and, you know, Ethereum or you may get into you may trade stocks at the same time. That's how I used to do it. So, you know, you didn't have to focus on one thing at a time. You would end up having like 10, 20, 30 trades open. And a lot of the trades that were open were all just break even trades like they're, they're, you know, it's like you'll have something that you've been in for the past three months. And you're just waiting for the lag and span to hit and you close it out, you know, it's stuff like that. And that's where your account can change. Your account value changes. And and if you're patient within a year or two, uh, if you're in a really good trending market, you might find that, oh, wow, I, you know, maybe this is all I have to do going forward. And it happens. OK, so I think I've, I've gone way, way longer than I want to with this <laughs> with this video. And I know there was probably a lot of dead air, but I want you to see, um, you know, the pros and cons to it. You're going to have a lot of break even trades. You're going to have some head fake trades, far less head fake trades and things that move faster than Ichimoku. Um, but you're going to also you're going to also have some uh, some massive trend trades that are going to dwarf your losses. And, and usually you're going to you'll watch you dwarf most of uh, most of other people who trade different trend indicators um, because you because it's lagging so much, um, but yet has uh, has some tools to look into the future. Um, it keeps you looking at the things that are ready to possibly make massive, massive moves. All right. So this is going to be this is the first video of uh, one or two more. Um, this is the basic strategy video. If you have any other questions about it, just DM me on uh, Discord or, you know, if you're in my Discord group, just, you know, shoot me a message in the group. Um, and yeah, yeah. If you want to join those groups, just check the description. Uh, you'll see the link to the Discord. I also have a Patreon where I, you know, do tutorings. That'll give that'll cost you. You'll see the specific cost for that at the Patreon. I also have a call out service uh, that uh, that's on the Discord. Uh, it's fifteen dollars a month, and uh, it's extremely successful so far. Almost eighty trades, forty trades in crypto, just about. And I actually think maybe 50 or 60 trades in stock. So maybe like uh, 90, 100 trades in total now. And we've actually only lost one crypto trade and we've lost one stock trade the entire year. Uh, so absolutely incredible, incredible year so far. So if you want to join the call outs and experience that, make sure to check out the Patreon. All right, everyone, remember, stay patient, stay vigilant and stay nimble. Love you guys. Take care. Bye.